to show change over time, you typically use a line chart. But when you're comparing different time series, the differences between the lines can obscure the changes within them. Index charts can help with that. They align values to a reference or fold the time axis on itself, or even do both. They're fairly common even if you're not always aware of them, and while they can be quite simple, there's more to them than you might realize. Let's take a look. I'm Robert Kosara, also known as Eager Eyes. Indexing data means picking a reference value and then expressing all other values relative to it. This is usually done on line charts and more specifically on time series charts. These charts have two dimensions. There's the horizontal axis, which is called the independent variable in statistics. In our case, this is always going to be time. The other axis is the vertical axis, called the dependent variable, because its value depends on the independent variable. I'm just going to call this the value here, and this could be anything like sales, or temperatures, or the unemployment rate, or number of people moving between states, and so on. The reason I'm explaining this is because index charts are typically done just on the value axis, or the dependent axis. And this is where you expect to be transforming the data. But you can index on either or even both of the axes, depending on what you're after. I'm going to cover what I will call value indexing in this video, which means indexing on the vertical axis. And then in the next video, I will talk about indexing on the time axis, which is a bit more complicated, but also kind of fascinating. Let's say we want to see how the cost of buying a house has changed in a few different places. We pick a city and determine the average price of a new house every month, maybe in Detroit. Then we do the same thing in Los Angeles. How do we compare the trends in these values? They're completely different. Let's throw in Seattle here as well, just because that's where I live. This particular dataset starts at the beginning of 2018 and goes until September 2020. LA is always more expensive than Seattle, which is always more expensive than Detroit. That's not all that surprising. But it makes it harder to see how much prices are changing over time, and how those changes compare between the different cities. Are prices going up faster in one place than the other? So let's index this data to the beginning of 2018. That means we divide the number for each city for each month by that city's value at the beginning of its line. So the number we divide by is different between Detroit, Seattle, and LA, but it's the same along the line for each city. All three lines now start at a value of 1 on the left, and we see the change as a fraction of the price going up or down. To make the numbers nicer, we'll multiply them by 100, so we get percent instead of fractions, but it makes no difference to the actual chart. Now this is an index chart, and you can now compare the lines more easily to see both the similarities and the differences between them. It turns out that LA actually had a dip in early 2019, and has grown less in terms of a percentage than Detroit. That's kind of surprising. You can also see a very pronounced seasonal pattern in the Detroit numbers that are less apparent in Seattle, and even less so in LA. If this reminds you of the case shiller Home Price Index, you're not wrong. It's slightly different because it's based on listing prices rather than sales, and it's not seasonally adjusted, but it's the same idea. The case shiller Home Price Index measures housing prices in 20 cities across the United States. It's a dataset that is released as an index every month, and its index date is January 1st, 2000. And as far as I know, this is completely arbitrary, it's just convenient and easy to remember. The data for some of the cities actually goes back to 1986, so that wasn't even the first date. It was just considered a good starting point for some reason. But just because it's already an index, doesn't mean we can't re-index it to a different date. This is it here, in Tableau, with data up until July 2020. On this dashboard, I can do two things. I can highlight the city I'm most interested in, which has nothing to do with index charts, I just like to be able to do it, and I can pick the months that I want to use as the index. When I do that, all the data points are recomputed so that the date I specified now gets the value of 100 for each city. And this is useful if I want to see how the prices have changed over time from a particular point, say from when I bought my house. If I bought at the top of the housing bubble in late 2006, I'd see the values drop and eventually recover. If I bought later, say late 2011, near the bottom after the bubble, I might see how prices have increased in the meantime. And I could compare how Seattle here is doing relative to another city over the same time, say Detroit again, or Los Angeles. 
There are many datasets that are released as indices like this, not just housing prices, but also stock market indices like the Dow Jones Index or the Consumer Price Index that measures inflation and so on. This kind of indexing is more fun when you can do it interactively in a chart, of course, but these are useful even without that. And as you just saw, you can easily re-index them if you want to. Another example here is from a report published by the International Monetary Fund that compares the drop in retail sales during the current pandemic between different countries. They chose December 2019 as the reference point to index 2, and you can see the changes from there. It's interesting to see that China, in light blue, had a much earlier but much shallower dip compared to France in dark green, or the US in dark blue here. A very different example is the way climate scientists look at the change in temperatures over the last hundred odd years. This chart, which you have undoubtedly seen in one form or another, shows the increase in global temperatures over time. When you look at the axis scale, though, you see that it's not measuring absolute temperatures, but the difference from a baseline in degrees Celsius. In a way, this is an index chart, but in this case, the people who made the chart and prepared the data did not divide by the reference value, but subtracted it from each data point. Also, we're only looking at a single time series here, though there are variations on this chart that have multiple time series as well. So why index the data here? The reference in this case isn't actually a single data point, but the average over about 30 years, from 1951 to 1980. It doesn't actually matter all that much which value you pick, the chart would just shift up or down if you picked a different one. Its shape wouldn't change. But this is a useful way of looking at things, of course, because it lets us see the change from a baseline value and appreciate just how much temperatures have changed, and in this case increased, from that. Index charts are useful to compare time series and to see their changes over time, rather than their absolute values. You usually want to be able to pick the reference, but even when you can't, they can still be worthwhile. When you're dealing with time series, try indexing them to see what you get. Indexing on value is pretty easy to do in most software, so it's worth a shot and might give you a different perspective on your data, even if you don't end up using it. Value index charts are the easier ones. It gets more fun with time index charts, which I will cover in the next video. Let me know what you think in the comments, and if you learned anything or found this video interesting at all, please hit the like button. And until next time, take care.